Is it possible that you could be addicted to your negative thoughts and your negative thinking patterns? Many behaviorists and those in the law of attraction community talk about the emotional payout that often comes with giving into these sorts of feelings. So if you find yourself being unable to combat your negative thinking spirals, this episode of Roxy Talks is for you. Stay tuned. What is up, my fellow dreamers and soul searchers? Thank you for joining me here for another episode of Roxy Talks, where we discuss confidence, mindset, manifestation, and more. I'm Roxy Lee. I'm a mindset coach, and I'm here to help you banish your negative thinking and limiting beliefs so you can bring love, clarity, and joy into your life. If you are interested in getting a hold of your own negative thinking patterns, check out my 30 Days of Alignment Challenge. It is actually what helped me change my thinking and ultimately change my life. I have a free version that will definitely guide you on your path and also an upgraded version where I offer you 30 videos for 30 days to help guide you like a little cheerleader. You can sign up for that at my website, roxytalks.com. The link for that is also also in the description below. I've also got exclusive merch, podcasts, more workshops, courses, and coaching at my website, roxytalks.com. You can also join me on social media. I'm on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Now, before we get into this video, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. And if you're feeling generous, please like and share. That helps us reach as many people as possible, and everyone deserves to know that they are in complete control of their reality. So, giving in to your negative thinking. This is definitely a big no-no if you are trying to move past your current situation. If you're trying to transcend what you already have in your life, allowing yourself to indulge in your negative thoughts or even reaffirming your current reality, agreeing with the stuff that you don't like. Yeah, that's what I'm experiencing. This is what happened and it sucks. This blah, 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 and I hate it. I can't stand this thing because of da, 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 da. These thoughts are not only habitual, but they end up being addicting. Something happens to us when we allow ourselves to play the victim. When we allow ourselves to feel like the world is against us, to feel like we're being singled out, to feel like it's always us, never anybody else, or it's always everybody else and never us. We get validation from ourselves. When you expect something to go wrong and it does, mm, I knew it. I knew it. I knew they were going to say that. I knew they were going to do this. I knew it wouldn't work out like that. I knew I'd lose. I knew I wouldn't find it. I knew I'd lose this thing. I knew I wouldn't pass the test or whatever. You're validating yourself. Even though it's not something you necessarily wanted, you are still right in your own righteousness, I guess is the way to say it, right? It's almost indignant sometimes. Oh, but it is like this. And there's this resentment, this anger, this... <laughs> but we are doing that to ourselves. Of course, we know. I talk about this all the time. We know that when we give in to those negative thoughts, we continue them. We know that when we affirm our current reality or reaffirm our current reality, agree with it, react to it, we know that we have just signed ourselves up for another round of whatever it is, another serving of that thing we don't want. And it ends up being its own self-fulfilling prophecy of us doomsday prepping, worrying, doubting, fearing, giving into our insecurities, whatever it looks like in your world. When you are proven right, you have a small sense of satisfaction, whether you like the outcome or not. And this little bit of satisfaction is something you can trust and believe in. That's what's fucked up, right? You believe that over anything else. You believe that validation over an expectation of something better for yourself. At the end of the day, if your situation is not moving forward, it's probably because you ultimately believe or trust or know or whatever that it's not working out, even though we're trying so hard and we wish it would. It's just not though, because do you notice it's not though? Like, even if it's just the tiniest, but it's not though, it's still an it's not though. If it ain't, I don't care where it is. I don't care if I see it. Yes, it's here. It's somewhere. It's on the way. I have it already. I'm not really worried. I don't need it. I don't need anything. I have everything I want. If it's not that, then what is it? What is it that you're actually saying about your situation? How often are you giving in to that habitual addictive thought. Because even though you don't enjoy being proven right in these situations, you 
kind of do. There's a little bit of satisfaction. And if there wasn't, why would I told you so be such a thing, right? I don't want to see you fail, but I'm telling you, you will if you do this thing and I'm going to rub it in your face when you do, because I was right. We have to be right. That's what I've noticed with a lot of people. There is this, not even a lot of people, it's mo- everybody. We all have this need to tell the truth and be right. See, I told you it doesn't work for me. See, I told you I suck. See, I told you they didn't like me. See, I told you it wasn't going to work out for me. I told you it was hard. I'm doing everything, but it's not working for me. And even though you don't want to be right about that, a little part of you does. A little part of you wants to be that exception to the rule. It seems like it works for everybody, but not me. Nothing works for me. Or even I can get everything except that one thing I want. You're damn right. (laughs) You sure are correct about that assumption. Because that's the reality you're choosing. That's what you are defining your life as. And this goes from the negative to the mediocre to the positive. Either way, whatever you say it is, that's what it is. So we have to be very careful that we are not going down the road of this is what it is and I hate it and then just taking off all night. You don't win any merit badges for describing yourself in a limited way. There is no promotion or badge or sticker or medal for modesty and self-deprecation. I mean, cool, that's what you do, but it's not what's going to help you change the situation. What's going to help you change the situation is not allowing yourself to succumb to those thoughts, to soak them up, to indulge in them, to act on them, to agree with them, to listen to them, to trust them, to believe them, any of it. If they're there, okay, bugs are here. I don't like them. I do my best to completely ignore their existence, and the only time I freak out is when they get up in my personal space. Same with a negative thought. If it's in my business, I'm getting it out of there. If it's just floating in the background and not really bothering me, I'm going to ignore it or whatever. That's just a super basic analogy. But my point is, is that when you give energy to these ideas, when you give attention to these thoughts that don't serve you, you are adding to them. You're making them bigger. You're validating them and you're making them become true. It's not that they were necessarily going to be true and that you had to have that outcome, but because you insisted upon it, it is yours now. So if you want to change the way that you react and get a hold of your negative feelings, you have to break the addiction to that little tiny piece of validation. Because What if that's the only validation you get? What if the only validation you ever receive in your life is when things go wrong and you're like, yep, knew it. That's fucked up. I wouldn't want to live like that. And if you are living like that, my heart goes out to you, but you don't have to do that. You can get a hold of it and push for something better, but it takes a little bit of work. It takes some ignoring, if you will, of what's going on around you because the more you react, the more you agree again, the more you get. So you have to stop reacting and stop agreeing. The problem is that the reacting kind of feels good in the moment. Doesn't it kind of feel good to give into your negative thought? Whether that's anger, fear, doubt, resentment, pain, worry, hate, disgust, whatever it is. It kind of feels good in the moment to let it in. It's almost like you're soothing yourself by allowing these thoughts in. You're like, there, there. You're right. Life is so terrible. It is awful. (laughs) I'm here for you. Keep crying. Cry. Get it all out. Cry, cry, cry. Think of all the terrible things that are happening in the world. Think of all the horrible things you've ever done or said and all the people who've ever rejected you. You're right. Life sucks. It's like you're being nurtured by the monster that's about to kill you. When I was thinking about this, I saw the image of uh, the girl in the sixth sense whose mom poisons her, like poisons her soup. And I started thinking about this idea that it's like, you think you're nurturing yourself, right? You're soothing yourself. You're, it's okay. You're right. Life does suck. You're spoon feeding yourself what you think is medicine. (laughs) And every 
thought that you let through, every negative thought you indulge in is like another spoonful of that medicine. Turns out though, that's not medicine, that shit's poison. And so every time you spoon yourself another spoonful of that medicine, you are further poisoning yourself. So it might feel a little bit better in the moment to allow yourself to indulge in that. What you're really doing is building up toxicity in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, in your world, in your life, however you want to look at it. And you are poisoning yourself with your own negative thinking. So just like anything else that's dangerous and addicting, it's not good for you. It's not good for your system. There's stuff in it that you are not fully aware of. There's something larger going on than you actually realize and you're playing with fire at this point. So my advice to you is get a hold of it. You must begin making a practice of not allowing yourself to spoon feed that poison anymore. If you experience something you don't like, okay. Okay, you did. But that doesn't mean that whatever's coming next is going to be equally bad or worse. And likewise, if you've experienced stuff in your life in the past, that does not mean it's what's going to continue for you unless you continue to expect it to happen to you. If that's what you think your lot in life is, then that's your lot in life. But it's only that because you've decided it is and you've claimed it for your own. Getting a hold of these thoughts and ideas is possible. It takes dedication, it takes focus, and it takes you making a point of doing it all the time, not allowing yourself to slack. Because even if you do let yourself slack, you're still poisoning the well. So recognize that what you've been doing to yourself up until this point is a pattern. It's a habit. It is an addiction, if you will. And those can be broken. They are not set in stone. Check out my video above where I discuss locating and identifying your limiting beliefs so that you can begin changing them. That video will really help you get started on this process of overhauling whatever it is you're doing with those thoughts. So I want you to comment down below. My well-being is my number one priority. My well-being is my number one priority because you need to learn to make allowing peace the habit instead of allowing turmoil, pain, negativity, whatever to be the norm. You don't have to live like that anymore. Even if you have your entire life, you can change it and start today and make that shift. Live something else for your life. You can do it. I did it myself. I literally did it with my 30 days of alignment challenge. I wanted to see if I could stop reacting to my reality for 30 days straight. I did. It was like a domino knocking over that ended up taking me on a completely different trajectory, leading me right here. So if you want to check out that program, that challenge, you can do so at my website, roxytalks.com. I've got a free version and an upgraded version that's a little more in depth with guided videos, but either option will absolutely help you get to that place where you can start implementing your own processes and overhauling your patterns. You can sign up for that at my website, roxytalks.com. Of course, that link is in the description below. I've also got exclusive merch, podcasts, and workshops, courses, and coaching at my website, roxytalks.com. You can also join my Facebook group, Black Moon Society. It's a great community for like-minded people who are helping each other manifest. That link is in the description below as well. And don't forget to join me on social media. I'm on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Here on the Roxy Talks channel, I go live every Monday at noon-ish PST for Q&A. And I've got brand new videos out every Tuesday through Friday. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you never miss an update. And if you're feeling generous, please like and share. That helps us reach as many people as possible. And everyone deserves to know that they are in complete control of their reality. We're all raising our vibrations together. You have the power. I believe in you.